appreciate you, brother, the liberty in here today. Um, I'll just start by saying that Rob, uh, I don't believe a word about him having to brawl. <laughs> Not that big, just because one of these look. <laughs> you know, no, no brawl going on. <laughs> I, I enjoyed it this morning already. I mean, you can go out of here already with your cup full. And then, I mean, yes. you guys, I'll be honest, you put you put a good German uh, beer hall to shame here this morning. Amen. <laughs> Not that I've ever been in the beer hall in Germany, but my wife has, so uh, <laughs> take her word for it. <laughs> Thanks, hubby. Oh, <laughs> um, uh, praise the Lord. You know, this church reminds me of our church in Brooklyn, New York. And uh, what a blessing it is to see so many walks of life. Uh, in the church, amen. Amen. And I got to stand back. This is blinding here a little bit. You know, this is like good to have a light. It feels like the Lord shining so much light on. I got to be like Moses with a veil on my face. That's uh, the rapture. I'm going to step back out of the light yeah. a little bit here. Uh, truly. All right, it doesn't move. Um, I, I remember one time we, we started church here, Blessed Hope Baptist Church in Brooklyn, New York, and. I was driving to uh, Brother uh, Beach's church in Staten Island, and I looked in the back, and we were listening to Honolulu's Messiah. I got three Puerto Ricans in the back. They used to be part of, one of the, two of them used to be part of the, uh, what do they call them? The, oh, I forgot so the Latin name of them. Latin, Latin oh, Kings, yeah. Oh, wow, okay. wow. One of them came packing, you know, into the church, and uh, he got saved. They got saved. And, and, and I'm looking, I'm saying, isn't this a marvelous thing? Uh, here we got three Puerto Ricans sitting in the back of my car going to a revival meeting listening to Hongo's Messiah of all this. <laughs> and I look at this church and I see so many different young men and, and different walks of life and man isn't it a marvelous thing yeah. 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 Bible believing church this morning that is a miracle of God uh, what God does for us I mean it's exciting I mean we had we had Cubans Jews we had Italians we had every walk of life and uh, sister, I found out uh, she's 74% uh, Jewish, so uh, God bless you, sister. I'm going to bless you. This <laughs> Gotta do that. <laughs> but it's kind of reverse. It's kind of like, you know, Solomon was a Jew and, and he had a black wife. <laughs> got a reverse thing going. Look all the pony crying black for the sun that looked upon me. You got in, brother. You got in. You know? <laughs> you're like a Gentile, bro uh, you're like a Gentile groom. Oh, <laughs> yes. 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 Isn't that good? Yeah. 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 So you get the blessings every way, man. Yeah. You're smart, brother Rob. You get down there with brother Andrews and pick his ear. And he's been sick. Pray for Pastor yes. Andrews. Yes. Yes. He needs our prayers. Yeah. Well. I'm, I'm preaching a message here this morning. I, I don't preach this just about anywhere. I, I've never really preached this message. But I don't know you folks. But God gave me this message for this church. And I think it's it's a it's a message. Don't get proud. Come on. Keep keep a low profile. That's one of the th points of my message is that if God has chosen you to do something for Him special, if God has given you a calling that's a little unique. To whom much is given, much is required. Right, right. That's good, brother. And so this message is God's special forces. And God gave me this message for Bible Baptist Church in Berkeley, California. Wow. And I look at this church and there's something happening here in this church that's special. And you gotta thank God for that. Amen. Amen. When you come to church, it is exciting. You know how many dead churches are out there where they're just the standard army of God? They're not in the business of actually operating in special ops in a clandestine, covert capacity. And here you are in a Bible-believing church where the Word of God is freely preached. And you are convicted and you are challenged every Sunday morning. You get to be part of that. Right, right. Who that'd make you cry? Yes, yes. Cry for joy. Yes. When you know there are so many churches out there that are just dead as a door. When there are so many churches out there, it's just they just go through the motions and they don't get the good doctrine and the good preaching. And the, this is something special. So you're part of a group of people, I believe, this morning. 
Pastor Kim, Kim is a great captain. Yeah. That's right. Amen. In the Lord's army. Yeah. The Lord had his hand on that man. Yeah. I don't I just met him one time up for a couple days up in Columbia Falls. And I've been watching him on YouTube from time to time and <coughs> see the zeal of the Lord and how God is reminds me of the time when it says in uh, when Samson went up uh, from uh, Eshtol, Eshtol, Eshtol and went up to, to Dan and the Spirit of the Lord moved him. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. Man, there's something when God starts moving right. Right. between certain places. That's where you want to get in. Wow. Amen. And you have a, a very good pastor, a great pastor. Yes, he is. And God's yeah. using him in a mighty way. And you know what? You ought to just bask it and enjoy it every Sunday. He said, man, I don't want to miss nothing. God, I was part of a church, Lighthouse Baptist Church, in San Diego when there was about 60 people came in, in that church. And there was something like that that you have here this morning. Now, I've seen that. I've been around. I've been in probably 300 churches. Preached in about 300 churches. And I can say this morning, do not be proud, but you're part of a special force. You have something going on here. That God has laid a mantle on. God has given you a baton to carry. And it's the Spirit of the Lord that does that. You know what you have here? You have liberty. Where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. Yes. You have so much liberty in this room this morning. Where, amen, you can just enjoy the preaching. I mean, when, I mean, you're going to hear some things that might offend you, but who goes to a football game and says, oh, I went too long. Yeah. Right. Or I don't like the call the ref made. I'm never coming back here. And all they want is my money. No, man. You go back to the game next week. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 And you say, you know, only, you know, nobody complains. The people next to me were rude. I didn't like the way they treated me when I went to the ball game. And all my parents, they always made me go to the ball game when I was a kid. I hate that. You know, I was forced to go to the ball game. <laughs> why don't they stop going to the ball games? Right, yeah. Same excuses why they did not come to church. Man, you got something good here. You say, man, let's have some extra innings. Amen. I love coming to church, man, when the Holy Spirit moves like that. And you're a peculiar church. You're in the heart of Berkeley. You're in the heart of California. And you're a Bible-believing, King James Bible-believing crowd. That means you have some enemies. Okay. Amen. Right away. Right. And uh, you're, you're most of you, most of the army, like I said, out there is not engaged in the most Christians today are not taking up their cross daily and falling. Most Christians are not out in the streets externally preaching the word. Standing for Jesus Christ, unfortunately. A lot of Christians go to church and that's their, that's their, their duties done on Sunday. But when you talk about special warfare, you've got to be ready continually. Pray without ceasing. You've got to have your, the Bible and memorize it and be engaged in warfare. And that comes with great toll. That comes with great casualties. And the reason I'm preaching, I, was, I had the fortune when I was a young man to go to UDT Budge training. And I was there for six months. Went through two phases and broke my femur. And so a lot of the things I learned there, I've learned to utilize them in my life as a Christian. A lot of the things that Paul will talk about in the scriptures is about warfare. About handling the sword. About putting on the whole armor of God. About fighting the good fight of faith. Amen? Yeah. This morning I'm going to use some of the things that I learned in that training. And, uh, excuse me. But before we begin, let's start with a word of prayer. Father, we thank you for this morning. For the good word of God. For the good things we've heard from it already, Lord. And I thank you for the saints that have come out this morning. I pray that everyone here knows Jesus Christ as their personal Savior. If there's someone here that doesn't, I pray, God, this morning they would come to Christ with no further delay. May today be their day of salvation. May they surrender. May they talk with Brother Rob or myself or somebody here that knows the word of God and say, I'd like to get saved. And trust Jesus Christ as my personal Savior before they leave this church hall. Father, bless the word now. Give God's people here strength. For the battle ahead. Help us, Lord, to love you more. In Jesus Christ's name I pray. Amen. Amen. Our text is 2 Samuel chapter 23. And I, Pat, I appreciate Pastor Kim and give me this liberty to preach in your pulpit this morning. 
He, uh, God's given him a gift. Yes. He's using his gifts. He's one of my comrades in the battle. Amen. And I don't know a lot of them, but I'm glad I'm in this camp. Amen. Well, I've been in many camps, and I, I wouldn't trade this camp for any camp out there. Amen. You got to thank Amen. God you're in a Bible-believing King James camp Amen. this morning. Amen. Now, this chapter will start in verse 1 and 2. We'll read a couple verses, and we'll jump to verse 8. Now, these be the last words of David. This is his last words, his will and testament. David, the son of Jesse, said, and the man who was raised up on high, the anointed of the God of Jacob, and the sweet psalmist of Israel, said, The Spirit of the Lord spake by me, and his word was in my tongue. And go down to verse 8. Now, this is our text. So David's writing, and, and he says, and the Bible says, these be the names of the mighty men whom David had. And the tetra, tech, tachmanite that sat in the seat, chief among the captains. The same was Adina, the Esnite. He lift up his spear against 800 whom he slew at one time. And after him was Eliezer, the son of Dodo, the Ohohite, one of three mighty men with David when they defied the Philistines that were there gathered together to battle, and the men of Israel were gone away. He arose and smote the Philistines until his hand was weary and his hand clave under the sword. And the Lord wrought a great victory that day, and the people returned after him only to spoil. And after him was Shema, the son of Agi, the Hararite. And the Philistines were gathered together into a troop where was a piece of ground full of lentils, and the people fled from the Philistines. But he stood in the midst of the ground and defended it and slew the Philistines. And the Lord wrought a great victory. Amen. Amen. Now, first of all, I'd like to say that, you know, David had a list of mighty men. And uh, there, the Bible says in uh, Revelation, it says, there, thou hast a name. You know, it'd be nice to have when you finish this life and you finish this battle is to be put on a, on a list of names that Jesus Christ lists. Okay. Yeah. Wouldn't it be? He said, the Lord said there in Revelation chapter 3, he said, thou hast a name. And then a little further down, he says, thou hast a few names. A few that have a name. Look at Revelation 3, verse 4. Just think about that for a second. To be able to be part of Jesus Christ's list of special forces, yeah. special Christians, what you call an elite force of those that David listed. He said, these men, their exploits are outstanding. They are to be rewarded by being remembered for their labor, for their risk-taking. For their, for their laying down of their lives for their fellow man. And the Lord said their names in the word of God. And then the Lord says here in Revelation chapter 3, verse 1, he says that the church of Sardis, the bloody church, the church that went through the darkest of the dark ages, the church that went through the Inquisition, the church that had been put the, the flame to the sword, he says about them, and the, under the angel of the church in Sardis write, These things saith he that hath the seven spirits of God and the seven stars. I know thy works, that thou hast a name, that thou livest and art dead. They were alive spiritually. They were giving their lives and they were dying, but they were alive. And that this church was to be rewarded that you have a name. You have a name. Look at verse 4. Thou hast a few names even in Sardis, which have not defiled their garments, and they shall walk with me in white, for they are worthy. Wow. Man, wouldn't that be something? Come on. To have a name in the book of Jesus Christ, yeah. where he says, I want to open a chapter here called the worthy ones. Those that were willing to lay down their lives and serve me their whole life. Amen. And go down to the altar and say, God, here's my life. Lord, take it and use it. Wow. Uh, my... My pastor, Dr. Ruffin, he wrote a book called The Full Cup. And I guess my, uh, my joy is that he has a list of men on the back of that book. I got the name on the list. Yeah. He said, Ed Keogh, missionary in Ukraine. Wow. Man, I tell everybody that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm in the book. Yeah. Now that, don't, that means nothing if my name's not on the list. Okay. Right. 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 But I honor him. And for him to honor me and put my name on the list of men that went out of that school, went out of his training, and went out to do something 
That gives me personal joy to be on the list. But that makes me think, I want to be on Jesus' list someday. Right. And then say, thou, uh, well done, thou good and faithful servant. Amen. Thou hast been faithful over little, be thou over much. Amen. Don't you desire that? To have Jesus Christ put a crown on your head and say, well done? Yes, sir. And to be part of that certain group where David listed 33 men here. Wow, there, there were those men that were the 30, and there were three over there. To be part of those special forces and to have the Lord just to be in saved is everything. Amen? Amen? But on top of that, that the Lord would consider making a way for you to get rewards and get crowns on top of salvation by grace. What a wonderful God. Amen? Right. That He would prepare such a thing. Now you look at this list and it, it wasn't a one-man job. It's not a one-man job. This church needs everybody pulling their load. Yes, yes. Pastor Kim, I can see his, his and his wife's fingerprint on this, the Lord's fingerprint. But there, I can see that line, the way he is. He's very attentive to details. Right. And that's, that's a blessing. He's your leader. Yeah. And you should follow that and say, he's got a library there. Said, the way this church is, you feel when you walk in here, the Spirit of the Lord has freedom, yeah. has liberty. There's an order. Amen. But it took, it took everybody to do this. Yes. Yeah. It takes everyone laboring together. Yeah. All 33 men. David couldn't do it alone. He had those special forces. And the Lord needs you to fill it. I didn't know. I was, a, I was a young boy. I was afraid to speak in public. I was afraid to come to the front of the classroom. I was afraid of the way I walked. I was afraid of the way I talked. I had five sisters. They all made fun of me. <laughs> I got a low self-esteem problem, you know, there. <laughs> Called me Edwina. Don't tell me that. Okay. Edit. <laughs> Picked on me. And when God saved me, called me a preacher. I said, Lord, you got the wrong man. You, Lord, you can't. Have, it's not, I'm not the preacher. You have to have someone else for it. Not me. You made a mistake here. Jeremiah said, I'm a child. It's not me, Lord. But David was a young man, and he went out and killed Goliath. He was an example, but some men joined him. Yeah. And it wasn't a professional group. Go back to chapter 1 Samuel, 1 Samuel 22.1. God does not use the professionals. He uses the amateurs. He uses the uh, untrained. Amen. He'll take a young boy like David, a shepherd boy. The Bible says, David therefore departed thence and escaped to the cave of the land. And when his brethren and all his father's house heard it, they went down thither to him, and every one that was in distress. Amen. How many of you came here, you're under some distress? Amen. Lord, use that. Amen. Lord, use that in your life. Right. And everyone that was in debt, how many have been in debt? And Lord uses that. Yes. And everyone that was discontented. The Bible says, gathered themselves unto him, and he became a captain over them, and there were with him about 400 men. You come to this church, you should say, Lord, here am I. Use me. Send me, Lord. What can I do for you, Lord? Can I play an instrument? Lord, can I go out in the streets and hand out tracts? I want to be used of the Lord. Because David was one man, and there was times when David was weak. In this very chapter, David thirsted and longed for water. And some men went out and valiantly got him a cup of water. Amen. There's times your pastor gets weary. His wife gets weary with the battles. Right. My wife and I have been at it for 31 years together. You get weary in the battles. Yes. You get longing for a thirst, just a break. And sometimes, you come out, I mean, my wife, we're living in two big boys and a, me in a hotel room with a dog. You know, that gets smelly. Yeah. We said, Rob, you smell and can't dance. Man, <laughs> come to our hotel room. You know, that's my champion, my wife. She puts up with it. We're on the road. Where are we at tomorrow? I don't know. Going from house to hotel, the profit chamber, to house, to the hotel, just down the road. Plenty of times you slept on the side of the road, just crack the seats back and sleep. You get on the road next morning. They know, my wife got all that. I thank the Lord. She's a tough soldier. She's a Sicilian. Don't mess with me. Yeah. Yeah. Don't mess with me. Yeah. She'll get a knife. <laughs> <laughs> Brother Rob. And she's taken a knife on me a few times. Yeah. You 
I had it coming. I had it coming. It wasn't a one-man job. It wasn't a professional group. People in debt, people distressed, people discontented. And it wasn't by human power. None of us have any great power. We're just sinners saved by grace. Yes. Pete Rockman was just a soldier, just a dance band drummer, yeah. laying in a water buffalo hole, looking up into heaven, saying, God, who are you? Why am I down here? Yeah. One day, Hugh Powell, yeah. preaching on the radio, walked by him. He said, what do you know, preacher? He said, I know Jesus Christ is my personal Savior. You know him? Yeah. Yeah. He said, I don't, but I wish I did. And he said, all right, he gets you got him saved. He said, who are you? Who am I? I was just a boy, just lost and on my way to hell. and got saved at boot camp 1984. Amen. And God changed my life, changed my heart. Amen. Yeah. And he taught me some things. He put me with some good men. Yeah. Under good captains like Pastor Kim, Pastor Andrews, Pastor Fisher, Pastor Bob Militello, Pastor Peter Ruck, <coughs> Jim McGavey, Brian Donnelly. Amen. I got under the right crowd. Yes, yes. You young men are under the right crowd. You have a great opportunity to do something for God that's special and get into the work of God. And the Lord knows there's no telling what God will do in your life if you just surrender your life and say, here's my hard work. Okay. Like that little boy David out there with the sheep. He, nobody knew who he was on the back hill of the, of the sheep coat. <laughs> nobody cared about David. No one knew who he was. But God was working on him. And he was writing Psalms. And he had a bear come up and he said, God, what do I do? And God says, go over there and get on that thing's back and take your knife. I don't know. Take that slingshot and knock it out first. And he said, all right, let me try that. And he tried that and knocked out the bear and he went over and killed the bear. And then he was afraid a lion come up. What did he do? I can't take on a lion. Yeah, you can't take that slingshot. You're good at that. You're a Benjamin. You guys can sling that rock like with a hair breath. A hair breath. That's like as close as hitting the hair without hitting the head. Man, imagine that. Who's going to do that? Stand still. I'm like Benjamite. <laughs> I'm going to hit your hair but without hitting your head. And that's how accurate those Benjamites were. And David took that thing and slung it and hit that lion. Knocked it out. Went over its leg. And then God said, go down and take some bread, take some cheese. Go down and see your brother and his father, Jesse, told him. And he went down there, and there was Goliath. You don't fight Goliath the first day of your Christian walk. That's right. There's going to be some lions. There's going to be some bears. There's going to be some trials. And if you can't get through the, and they ain't saying a bear and a lion is a little thing, but if you can't get through some little battles, don't ever expect to face a Goliath in your life. And so God did it. God said, you can do it, my grace. You can do great things. Uh, like what William Carey said, attempt great things for God, expect great things from you. There's no telling what God can do through and for and by the man who is holy, give, given over to him and committed to serve him and not touch the glory. God will use you, brother, if you just surrender your heart, no matter who you are. Amen. God will yeah. use you. Maybe never else doubts you. Maybe everybody else thinks you're nobody. Maybe everybody else thinks you'll never amount to anything. Amen. But I see you, and I'll use you. And I'll take you and make something out of that poor clay because I created you for this purpose. That's good. All you got to do is surrender to the hands of the yes, Almighty. Yes, God will use you. God's special forces. You're here today. You're a threat to the evil empire of Satan. He does not want you to be in this this one. There's a world today that's controlled with mind control. Uh, now, how do you think Hitler controlled all of Germany? How do you think Stalin controlled the masses? They are, this world is coming to the Antichrist kingdom, and you have broken the yoke. Yes. You've gone rogue. Yes. You say, I'm going to be part of a Bible believing crowd that doesn't believe the, the, the uh, brainwashing going on on the television. Amen. He can't even turn the television on. They got the newscaster who's a straight guy having to be all excited about some pink triangle they're putting up on a mountain around here somewhere. The whole world's being brainwashed to this socialistic perversion, pedophilia, wickedness around us. Yes. Yes. And everyone's marching in lockstep. Yes. Two step. Yes. Wow. They hit or did it? Yes. Oh, but we're an educated people. Educated and lost, going to hell. Yes. Your degrees are taking you to hell. Right. Because you don't know the Lord. 
You have all the education and go on to damnation for eternity. Hitler, Stalin, Man Zedong, the methodology of mind control. By the way, that, the Bible says our weapons of our warfare are, uh, are not carnal, but are mighty through God. Let's turn there. I think that's in 1 Corinthians, 2 Corinthians 10. No, my outlines aren't perfect. If I don't have an outline. I'm preaching from the pipeline. Amen. Straight from God to your ears. Amen. This is a message for you in this church at this time in Berkeley, California. Amen. Are we in Berkeley or San Jose? I don't know. Berkeley. Berkeley. Man, when we say Berkeley around the rest of the country, you're like, oh, yeah. Berkeley. <laughs> Scary place. All the liberals and the wackos. And I come in here and I'm like, we in Berkeley? Yeah. <laughs> Wait a minute, I thought, not, not what I thought. All right, 2 Corinthians chapter 10. So you've broken the mold. Yeah. You've yeah. broken the shackle. Yeah. You've That's signed good. up in the Lord's special forces and said, I'm behind Pastor Ken. Yeah. Teach me the Bible. Help me to be a good soldier. Yes. Help me to get behind my captain. When he's weary and thirsty, I will hazard my life like Jonathan. I will go to the bastion. I will break through and go to the well of Bethlehem. I will lay down my life. I will fight the good fight. Even if I'm uh, called a Ruckmanite or called a Kimite. What do you call him? A Kimite. <laughs> Amen. Amen. But you Kimite too. <laughs> Norisites, Lutherans, yeah. Petrobusians, on and on, yeah. Donatists, yeah. Novatians, Montanists, named after the preacher they follow. Don't be ashamed to follow your preacher into the battle. That's Pray right. for him. He's not perfect. Amen. Ruckman's not perfect. But that's your captain. That's the one you've given, who's given the orders to go to the battle. You take the orders from your general. Say, where shall I fight? What shall I do? Pastor, I'm a young Christian. Show me some things I need to know. I'm trying to figure out God's will for my life. And why don't you just open, open your ears and say, show me what you think I should do, where I should fight the battle. Where do you want me to stand? What gifts do I have? I don't know what to do with them. I have a sword. I don't know how to use it. Train me to use the sword. Come on, that's good. Help me to use this sword, preacher. Sword drills. Okay. Open up the second eye. Boom. Open up the second Nehemiah. Where's that? At? <laughs> Just checking you, brother. Bro. What was it? It says here, verse 4, For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God that are pulling down of strongholds, casting down imaginations, and every high thing that exalted itself against the knowledge of God, and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. Yeah. Our weapons. We had weapons. Right. Isn't that great? Now the Navy SEALs, you learn your weapon. You spend time with that weapon. You know how to use that uh, Springfield uh, 1911. You know how to use that M16. You know how to use the M60. You know how to use the thermal grenades. You don't want to blow yourself up. You have to learn how to use the 50 caliber. You got to learn to use a 66 caliber. Amen. Amen. You got to know how to know it inside and out, read it and love it, and know how to use it properly. Special forces. That's what makes you special. You're special because you're in a King James Bible believing church. Yeah. You know the churches I've started in Ukraine? King James Bible believing church. Yeah. They say it in their church charter, in their statement of faith. Amen. We believe the King James Bible is the perfect holy word of God. Amen. Amen. And they do. Because they know it's different. Yeah. Uh, they got the Sonata Bible in Russian, but it ain't the same. Nope. Nothing is perfect in this world with the King James Bible. Amen. And they have good Bibles in the Luther and the, and the Olivetan and all the others. There are good translations out there, but nothing is perfect like this book that God brought in. Okay. That's right. And so you have it in English. You know what? You are very special. Yes. Come on. To speak English. Yeah. To have the king's English. To have the very book. You know, they changed that verse, by the way. Verse 4. Uh, I mean, excuse me, verse 5. They changed casting down imaginations to something to the effect like, 
answering arguments and other persuasions. Yeah. No, no, no. This battle's in your mind. Yes. The imaginations are here, not external attacks against yes. your faith. This is your attack from your within your own mind. Yes. These, because I know. How do I know that? It says, uh, "And bringing into captivity every thought." They're not Bible translators. They're nincompoops, man. They're idiots. They're buffoons. That's right. The text itself tells you the battle's right here. That's right. You know one of the sayings we had in Navy SEALs? Mind over matter. If you don't mind, it don't matter. Right. Don't let it bother you. If you don't mind, it don't matter. That's good. Now, Luther said, the birds can fly above your head. They can fly all day, but don't let them make a nest in your hair. Yeah. What does he mean? Devils are always flying around. Yeah. Don't give them opportunity to stay too long in your thoughts. Okay. Good. Chase them away. Yeah. That thought life is where the victory is won. That's right. When you say through faith and through grace, I can do it through God's grace. I can do this. For there's nothing too hard. I can do all things through Christ, which strengthens me. Yes. I remember the first day in Bud's training. I was standing there with a boat. We already went through six weeks of partial hell. And then we're in hell you don't sleep for a whole week. And we're standing on the grinder. We get up at 5 in the morning. And they made us get wet. You're standing there all sandy and wet. And your hat's all wet. And you hold the boat over your head. You just hold your hands up for about a minute like this. Or hold them out like this. And see how tired you get. Yeah, exactly. And we had uh, the, 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 the K-Pox. And we had the paddles. And we had other things. And water in the boat. And we're standing there for a couple minutes. My mind. That's where the battle's at. My mind started... Other guys were cheating. They were making us hold us. Punch the guy in the yeah. side of the head. Hold the boat up. Yeah. You're about to quit, man. And this guy is making you hold his weight too. Yeah. Bury one another's burdens. <laughs> There's so many illustrations. And the bell's right there. You hear, bing, bing, bing. Devil's working on your mind. Somebody quit. Yeah. My legs. Now they're coming up and Inspector Miller's there holding the hose, spraying it right in your face. <laughs> Trying to get air. Can't do this. I'm, I'm, I'm not just an 18 year old boy. I don't know. I've been a mama's, I've been a mama's boy and now. Now here I might get how to get here. <laughs> I'm all wet. These guys are yelling at me, being mean to me. <laughs> Calling me all kinds of bad names. My arms are getting tired just doing this, man. Bringing back memories. <laughs> You're holding that thing five minutes. Bing, bing, bing. Bing, bing, bing. They're lining up now. Quitting. You're thinking about quitting? Got quiet for a while. You're still holding the boat up. Down boat. Oh. Oh. oh, this is easy. I can do this. I can make the rest of the week. All you got to do is get through that one exercise. Okay. Okay. Bible says sufficient for the day is the evil thereof. Yeah. Can't worry down the road. You can't get through a whole hell week in one time. I don't even know how I got on that. The only easy day was yesterday. That's a saying we used to have. The only easy day was yesterday. Forgetting those things that are behind. Or how does it say? Yeah. Impressing. Oh, Philippians 3. 13. Philippians 3.13. Amen. What time is it, brother? I don't have a clock. Uh, 1.12. Oh, there's a clock. All right, we've got a little time. <coughs> Bible says here in Philippians, forgetting those things. Yeah. Amen? You've got to forget some things. You can't keep dwelling on the failures, the past. That exercise is over. And now I was so happy when they said, down boat, they said, get wet. And that means we'd run out of the grinder, run up that berm, and run down over that berm, and go into the Silver Strand, and get out there in the Pacific Ocean, and get all wet, and say, make a sugar, yourself a sugar cookie. And you'd run up, land, get on that white sand, and roll all over, and get sand all over, and you'd come back, and be all sandy. I was so happy, because I made it through that berm. You got enough problems today, brother. Stay on the course. Stay in the, your lane. And forget the things that are behind. Philippians chapter 3. I'm trying to find that. Philippians chapter 3. Verse 13. Great verse. Amen. And verse 14. Yeah. I gotta do more Bible drills. Okay. Brother, I count not myself to have apprehended, but this one thing I do. 
forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forth unto those things which are before. Put it behind you, brother. The only easy day was yesterday. That means that's done. Yep. You can't go backwards. You can't worry about those things. You've been through a divorce? Put it behind you. Press forward for Jesus Christ. You lost a child? That's terrible. But don't let it stop you from serving Jesus Christ. You had a bad business venture and lost your shirt? Put it behind you. Don't lose sleep over it. Get your eyes on the goal. Put, put your eyes on the prize. Pressing, for, pressing forth. Amen. Press, I press toward the mark. Reaching forth on those things that are before. I press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. Amen. You got the tools, brother. Yes. In our text, there's some elites there. Let's go back to our text for a little while and get some of those more of those Navy sayings. But I want to look at some of the men. Look at their exploits. What can you do? What can you do for the Lord? Look at some of these men, what they did for the Lord. We're in 2 Samuel, I mean, uh, verse, uh, chapter 23, and verse 8. 2 Samuel 23, verse 8. When you get there, say amen. 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 All right, this verse says here, and these be the names of the mighty men whom David had, the Tachmanite, that sat in the seat, chief among the captains. The same was the dino, the Esnite. He lifted up his spear against 800 whom he slew at one time. There's some men out there that have been called to be evangelists, and they can see 800 souls saved at one time. Men like Jack Hiles. He led thousands and thousands to Christ, praise God. You take somebody like Billy Sunday, led a million souls to Christ. It cost him, though. The devil went after him with all he had in the kitchen sink. He lost his own son, son of the drunk, yeah. drunkard's deaths. The devil's not going to just let you alone if you decide, I want to be part of God's army. I want to be in God's special forces. I want to stand for Jesus Christ, and I want to do something for Jesus Christ. He is going to attack your children. David lost four of his sons. Yeah. Dr. Ruffin, terrible tragedy. Yeah. Yeah. You know the devil's going to go for yours. Some of yours have gone to the world going to happen. Just you could do the best you could do as a parent, and there's going to be some casualties. Yes. Many of the greatest men of God, not saying all the time, but some of the greatest men of God lost their children to the devil. This man here, though, Billy Sunday was my example. You've you got some great men out there who will stand for God and uh, do a great work for God and see many souls saved. God may call you to evangelism. God may call you to be a soul winner. And be able, I was able in some places to go to villages and see 30, 40 souls saved. Gloria. That's a blessing. Yeah. Have a tent full of people and preach the gospel uh, about 11 o'clock at night. Wow. Preaching for several hours to lost people. Amen. We stood in the village one time where a preacher failed to come twice. And they locked the doors of the theater on us. And we stood out the tomb of the unknown soldier in the rain and preached to about 30 people. And I asked those people who would like to receive Christ. They, brought, they came out on their bicycles. And they stood in the rain, some of them with umbrellas, many of them without, and they heard the gospel preached, and wow. they raised their hands. Amen. Amen. And received Christ. In the town of Yuzhna. Why that they locked the doors? That preacher didn't come two weeks in a row and he promised he would. And they said, We're through with Christianity. But some people wanted to hear the gospel. And so you might be called to lead many souls to Christ. Take up that spear. Take the word of God. Fight the good fight. This man killed 800 of the enemy. When you save a soul, man, you're destroying the devil's work. Amen? Amen. Amen. His desire is to take that soul to hell. Man, that's something you can liberate souls. Yeah. Be a soul winner. Learn how to win souls. Learn the Romans road. If you don't know how to lead a soul to Christ, go and see Brother Rob. Go and see some of the brothers in the church that lead souls to Christ and say, teach me how I can lead a soul to Christ. What is the plan of salvation? I want to know how I can lead others to Christ. Then there's another man. And after him was Eliezer. He gets a name. A name in the list. And his name was on Eliezer. And his, what was special about him is uh, he was deserted by his brother. Notice that. It says, and uh, the son of Dodo, the Ahohite, one of the three mighty men with David. He was close to David. He was, you know, David is a picture of Christ here. And if you want to get close to the Lord, that would be something special. 
There are certain men in history who have great names. They have a name. Martin Luther. Yeah. John Knox. Yeah. D.L. Moody. Amen. Soul Winning. That's right. Billy Sunday. Billy Frank Sunday. Norris. Yeah. One of the greatest is Peter Ruckman. I, God is, Amen. He's a Martin Luther of our times. Amen. Because he stood. This Bible says here that what happened to this man was, when, and, and the Bible says that when they defied the Philistines that were there gathered together to battle, and the men of Israel got away. This reminds me of Dr. Ruckman. He preached that book and stood on that book, and many of his friends left him. Yeah. A lot of them left him high and dry, standing alone, taking it in the neck for the King James Bible. And you know what he did? Did he let go of that sword? Did he let go of that book? Did he say, well, you know what, I'm all alone out here in this field? No. He gripped even harder. Yeah. You couldn't tell where the book ended and where his hand started. You couldn't tell where that sword ended and that shaft and that, uh, that sword. He was gripping onto that book. He was part of that book. He said, I'm going to never going to let go of this book. The Bible says his hand cleaved. Yeah. Wow. Now, when you cleave something, it's like you split it. You know, He was squeezing it so hard he could cleave, just cut it in half. Cleave. Cleaver. I don't, you know, I don't understand that. Maybe somebody in a theological mind can enlighten me. But boy, that thing became one. It was like, it was welded. Cleave to something. Hold on. Two things becoming one. And his hand clave under the sword. And the Lord wrought a great victory. See, it wasn't men's power. That's right. It wasn't Peter Ruckman's power. It was the Lord working through him. Amen. And that same spirit worked through you too. You're like God. Peter Ruckman just said, I'm nobody, God. What I have, I'll give it to you. He was a cartoonist. He said, I'll draw it for Christ. Wow. He said, God, I, I played in a dance band. I played a tuba for Christ and started a band, which I think inspired your band here. Yeah. And it's grown. Amen. That's he right. He touched Great the lives God. of so many because his hand played with the King James Bible. Wow. Brother, don't let go of the book. This is good. Don't ever let go of that book. Amen. Get your name on the list. Get your name forever emblazoned in the Word of God. In the, in the Book of Life and in the books of God said is a library up there. Yes. It's important. By faith, you can get your name on the list. And then there's those like Dr. Ruckman and Gail Ripplinger and those that stood like Sam Gift for the book yes. and won souls to Christ. And did great feats and great uh, works for God. And then lastly, we have this man, Shema. And after him, Shema, the son of Agi, the Hararite. And the Philistines were gathered together in a into a troop where was a piece of ground full of lentils. They wanted to take your food away and take away the churches. There are great pastors out there. God's put his hand on your pastor. Yes. His church is going to grow. Yes. And the devil's going to try to take him down because he sees the threat that this special force, yes. this elite group is here in Berkeley, California. But he's going to stand and keep to protect the home front and the lentils. If you take away that food, your soldiers can't eat. Wow. An army runs on its belly. Yeah. It runs on its stomach. And you need the churches and the people of God supplying the need of the missionaries that are on that wall there, without you being faithful and guarding your ground and standing your ground, there'll be no missionaries. Come on, brother. There'll be no work of God. If you just lay out every once in a while and say, I'm not going to go to church this Sunday. Come on. Come on. Stand your ground. Come on. Get in your place. Your seat should not be empty. Amen. Say, God, help me to stand and do it without murmuring and without grumbling. You know, soldiers are great grumblers, amen? And they sit in there, I don't know, like grumbling. Yeah. <laughs> right, you see what, see what George did there? George Washington, he's out on that boat, man. You see the guy painting the painting in the other boat? Crazy <laughs> <laughs> <Raising> George. <laughs> and they sit and talk bad about the captain. You do it. Watch your mouth. Watch out what you say. Soldiers grow. Uh, they do that a lot. Try to, try, to, try to get behind your captain. Try to defend your ground. Defend Bible Baptist Church. Amen. Stand up for your own people. 
Amen. Get the food out. The bread. Cast thy bread upon the waters. Yeah. This is the storehouse. <clears throat> okay. You're the garden. You're to be here. You're to sing praises to God. Sunday morning. When you gather together. Wednesday night. Wednesday evening. You pray. Yeah. You ought to be here. You ought to be here on your knees praying. Stand in guard. Pray without ceasing. Like this man here. Shema. People like, oh, there's so many mighty men like that. J. Frank Norris stood his ground against right. all the preachers that day. Amen. He built a work in Fort Worth. He even had a church in Detroit. Imagine having a church in Detroit and Fort Worth at the same time. Yeah. Back in those days. Trained men sent him out of his college. Men that stood. Bob Jones Sr. stood. Wise man. Amen. Young old Hay Hayseed went out and started a Bible college. Taught a man named Peter Ruckman. Taught some great men. Billy Graham. Yeah. Other men. Stood his ground in the book. Didn't go with modernism. Go, didn't go with liberalism. Didn't go the way of the world. Stood on the book. Some great men in history. Bunyan. Wouldn't take a license. Went to jail. Yeah. Stood on his faith. Stand. Having all to do. Having done all to stand. Stand. Amen. Having your loins girded about the truth. Having a was that having to have a helmet of salvation, the sword of the spirit, and the shield of faith? You pray. Yes. Fight on, Christian. Amen. There's it's a, it's an internal battle. Pulling down the strongholds. And by the way, that text has a little semicolon and a parenthesis. If you ever go and look at that, that's God's winking smiley face. Yeah. <laughs> I find a whole bunch of those in the Bible. And I'm almost like the, the King James, the Lord said. Yeah, the Lord said, I, watch out, that's out. You know what I'm talking about. Yeah. You'll find those. Those are called emojis. From God. Yes. <laughs> so, they change that in all those versions. Yeah. Casting down arguments or okay. destroying arguments. Yeah. And by the way, you were in Galatians chapter 3 today? Five. Five. Chapter 5, yeah, verse 8, I think there, or 10 says... I would that they were cut off, uh, that they were even cut off, that trouble you. Yeah. Y'all read that? Yeah. I would that they were cut off, which trouble you. Yeah. I would. Okay, Paul's saying these people who are coming and teaching this, don't let them in. Yes. Just cut them off from your fellowship. Right. Simple, right? Is that what that means? Yes. 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 Y'all agree to say amen. 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 Don't let them in here. Don't let them teach this uh, Judaism. Don't let them come in and teach Calvinism. Don't let them come in. Come on. Cut them off. Amen. Amen. Here's my point. Thank God you got a King James Bible because that's pretty nice. That's, that's pretty good. That's, that's, that's perfect. Yes. Amen. All the other versions say, I wish that they were cash <laughs> And this is a side note. Yeah. You want to read the NIV? Paul is a pervert. Yeah. <laughs> He, it says yeah. it in every version, even the new King Jimmy, all these versions. I would that they were emasculated. Yeah. I would that they uh, were castrated. I would. Uh, mm, no, it says, I would that they were cut off with trouble. Simple. Don't let them in the church if they're going to teach their false doctrine. Amen. Don't let them come around. It is not a perverted text. Thank Amen. God for King James Bible. Amen. Amen. These little things are changed in all these versions. Yes. This is weird. And that's weird, right? Yeah, come on. It comes from origin. Yeah, come on. It comes from origin. Yeah. Study history. Yeah. Yes. He emasculated himself. Funny. Yes. Yeah. For the kingdom of God's sake. <laughs> he did. He said, I, I yeah. want to be a, a eunuch. So he, he castrated himself. No, God does not want you to do that. Yeah, amen. Anyways, I'll finish up here. It's a few minutes. Here's the things I wrote down. The Navy SEALs never leave a man behind. Okay. This is part of the Naval Spec War Command Creed. I will always complete the mission. I will never quit, and I will leave no one behind. You need to love each other in this church. Come on. You're not going to make it alone. Like I said, it takes all of you. Yes, right. You're going to, don't leave a man behind. The Navy SEALs never left a man behind. That's their, they'll die going to get that body of another man. Amen. I am responsible for my actions and accountable to my teammates. I challenge them to perform as I expect them to challenge me. 
Jesus Christ never left one behind. Yes. Philippians chapter 2, 3, 4. Let this mind be in you, which is also in Christ Jesus. What, what the Bible says there, uh, let not every, not, think not every man on his own things, but on the things of others. others yeah. We had in the Navy SEALs a swim buddy. When you go in the water, you always had someone you were looking out for, and they yeah. were looking out for you. Well, Two are better than one. Amen. And a threefold cord is not quickly broken. Yeah, right. You see someone weak in the church, do their buddy. You see yeah. somebody drowning in the church, hypothermia, yeah. they're getting cold, they're falling, their eyes are rolling back in their head, and you say, oh man, I've seen that before. He's going out, man. I've got to get him back in a warm place. I want to help that brother. Go visit him. Take him to lunch. Pray with him. Yeah. Get him back in, on fire. Warm him up. We said, I already preached. The only easy day was yesterday. Every day has challenges. Face today's fight. Forget about yesterday. I mean, I visited a brother last week, Shane Smith. And I'm about to close, but I was saved, but not a Christian. Maybe you never heard anything like that before. There's a lot of saved people that are not Christians. Yeah, that's right. Why? A Christian is a follower of Christ. Right. You can be saved and on your way to heaven, but not following the Lord Jesus Christ and his example and taking up your cross. And I was living and going to the Gator Gardens, and I was not living for Jesus Christ. And he and I were working out in the weight room, and he said, hey, come to Lighthouse Baptist Church. And he and I used to be swim buddies back in Navy SEALs. We were in class 128 and 132. And uh, I'd say, I'll meet you at the gate. And that went on for about two months. And finally, he came and found me in my barracks where I was sleeping and woke me up. He said, hey, brother, go get a shower. I'll wait for you. And he took me to the last Baptist church. And let me tell you something. I wanted to my heart to go to church. I wanted to be in a good church, but I had no strength. I needed a big brother, a mentor. And there's a lot of people out there who would love to be here today. And all I'm looking for is a big brother to come and be a swim buddy and say, hey, man, I know you're going under. Hey, come to church. Amen. Yes. And Shane brought me to church, and I never, never missed church since. Amen. One time I went to Austria, I didn't find a church. But I had missed church. Wednesday night, I'm there. Sunday morning, I'm there. Amen. Sunday night, I'm there. If the church doors are open, I made up my mind. Shane Smith was my swim buddy. I'm going to serve Jesus Christ. And I got to see him and his wife after 40 years. Amen. And my kids got to meet Shane. We're old, fat boys. He's, no, he's in good shape. I'm an old, fat guy now after all these years. But thanks to a swim buddy. Will you be a swim buddy to somebody? Wow, this is good. Thank God for a swim buddy. Yes, yes. I have one. He still loves me, prays for me. I stayed at his house, fed me in the morning, my family. Amen. He's still my swim buddy. Still looking out for me. I'll close with these thoughts. Keep a little profile. That was one of our sayings. Keep a little profile. Don't get cocky. Don't get proud. The head, the one who gets his head up on the profile of the horizon, gets, he gets shot. Yes. Stay with the lowly Jesus. Amen. Keep being humble. Stay in the fight. Mind over matter. Faith is the victory. If you don't mind, it don't matter. Don't let the little things in life bother you so much. Move on. Don't let the devil get you down over the little broken hangnail to keep you out of church. Hate that. Move on. Get the victory, brother. Say, Lord, I want the victory. I want to be on the list. And lastly, the paper, I have, oh, I have it written down in my hand. We had a warning order. When you're a Navy SEAL, you have to have all your bags packed all the time, ready to go in five minutes. Are you ready to go? Navy SEAL has his weapon. He has his outfit. He has his gear in a closet, in a safety plate, in a safe, in a safe room. And it's called a warning order. And they can call them at any moment, and they have to be ready in five minutes to kiss their wife, grab their gear, and go and be at the base within like 10, 15 minutes. Are you ready to leave this world? If Jesus blows the trumpet, and the Lord calls you home today. Are you ready? Uh, are, you, are you even saved? I hope everybody here is saved, but if you're not saved, you're not ready. But if you're saved here this morning, are you 
excited and waiting for the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. That's our warning order. We've been warned. It may happen at any moment. Be found serving. Don't be found in the world living in the, in the lust of the flesh, lust of the eyes, and the pride of life. Say, Lord, I'm ready for you to come today. Even so, come Lord Jesus. Amen. Brother Rowe.